Hey people, it is Saturday, September the 18th, and it is 5.09 in the afternoon, and the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. And I'm here looking at the skyline from Radu Avenue here at Riverdale Park East. I don't think I've opened a video with this view before. I know I've ended some videos with this view. And as you can see, there's quite a number of people sitting and admiring the view here in the park. And we seem to have some ultimate players down there. But I think what I'll do is I will walk north here along Broadview Avenue. Once I get up to Danforth, but then I will head west over the Bloor Viaduct and continue on along Bloor Street into downtown the Bloor Yorkville area at the very north end of downtown and that's that cluster of tall buildings you can see at the very end of this skyline shot here And the sun is getting lower in the sky earlier now, so I might be walking a bit into the sun. Hopefully it won't get so low that it glares directly into the lens. And we have the ever-present construction here. Last time I walked along here, there was no construction. But it just seems to pop up when you least expect it. Guy gives no F's. <laughs> and there are some tennis courts. Trying to get past this group here without that guy's music. Oh, it stopped. Oh, it started again. Definitely the trend of 2021 for everyone to walk around with their music playing 
audibly for everyone to hear instead of funneled into their ears via earbuds. I guess earbuds are passe now. Everyone needs to hear your music when you're walking around. Whether they want to or not. <laughs> So far I've managed to stay in this nice shaded area here for this portion of the walk. But I think once I get up to Bloor Street or the Bloor Viaduct, I'll be fully exposed to those ultraviolet rays. And I saw recently on the Urban Toronto Development Forum that this site, which is currently a Loblaws grocery store, has a proposal for a new development, which would replace this with a high-density residential project with a tall residential building. And it's actually a pretty nice-looking proposal. I'm not sure if they'll replace this grocery store as part of that proposal because I'm sure the area residents wouldn't like to see them lose their neighborhood grocery store. coming up to the busy intersection of Broadview and Danforth which is made a little more congested due, congested due to this current construction here so now we're going to make our way over the Bloor Viaduct, which is also known as the Prince Edward Viaduct. 
There's a look east down Danforth Avenue that will lead you into Greek Town and beyond. And north up Broadview. And there's Broadview Subway Station just over there. But now we'll begin our journey over the bridge. Walking into the sun. Got a bit of a traffic back up here, I'm going eastbound. And there you can see the skyline again. There's a decent view of the skyline from the bridge here, but not as good as obviously from that Riverdale Park. Where you can see the whole thing in one expansive glance. Other direction. It's looking north up to Don Valley Parkway and off in the distance there you can see those are the towers at Young and Eglinton which I like to call Strides Land. Huh. Traffic isn't too bad right now. It wouldn't be unusual on a nice weekend for the traffic to be completely clogged, but at least it's moving right now. And we have a detour. At least the sidewalk isn't completely obstructed. Am I supposed to walk? I don't know where I'm supposed to walk here. Feels like I'm walking in the bike lane now, but there's, there was no way for me to get over here to this side. It was blocked off, so maybe the sidewalk was obstructed. Because as I like to say, in Toronto, no sidewalk goes unobstructed. I just keep an eye behind me here every Maybe 30 seconds or so to make sure some cyclist doesn't come roaring up behind me.
when I made it. Okay, now that sidewalk entrance is open, but at the other end, I could have sworn it was blocked. Well, I'll have to look again when I look at the footage later. In any case, I made it. I can hear a subway train running underneath the viaduct here. Now we're coming into downtown, Bloor Street East. And looking up, I can see there's not a single cloud in the sky. It's just nothing but empty blue skies every which way I look. Castle Frank subway station. And up ahead you can see the old 1960s era apartment slabs of St. Jamestown. the densest neighborhood in Canada and one of the if not the densest in North America at least in the US and Canada maybe not Mexico
then the dens density will be increased with these new condo towers. They are a part of St. Jamestown still. Got lots of sun glare here, but hopefully the shot will come through. I've always thought this was one of the most awesome views in the city here. It's looking down at Rosedale Valley Road, and there you can see a tunnel that the subway passes through as it goes over Rosedale Valley Road. And the Yorkville skyline. And lots of greenery. Rosedale Valley Road just passes through a very deep, heavily forested little valley. Just steps away from skyscrapers. That's pretty cool, really. When you're down there, you would ne never know that you're in the middle of a big city. Try and get out of this sun glare. I think once we get up closer to these buildings. And there we go. Some people don't like tall buildings because they block the sun, whereas with me, that's why I like tall buildings. <laughs> Especially now that I'm doing walk tubing. They come in handy for that. That's a look south down Parliament Street. I've done many a walk along Parliament Street. It's the main retail strip of the Cabbage Town neighborhood. And I wonder what sort of retail will come into these new spaces here. Well, it looks like I have to come out into the sunlight again. You can see an airliner making its way over the region. It looks to be at full altitude. Probably got a good clear view of the city as they passed over, although it probably just looked like a Google Earth satellite grid from that altitude.
And we're still passing by the Rosedale Valley Road area here on the north side. Here's the Rosedale Valley footbridge. It'll take you into the Rosedale neighborhood, just across the valley. It's one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the city. In contrast to St. Jamestown over here, which is one of the poorest neighborhoods in the city. Toronto Fire Station 313. Here's Sherborne Street. Yeah, I don't think I can escape this sun glare. No matter what side of the street I'm on right now, it's shining literally right down the center of the street. When the sun gets lower in the sky, it has this cool effect where it lines up with the skyscraper canyons and parts of downtown and the financial district and up here in the Yorkville area. And it has a cool tunneling effect where the setting sun beams down the narrow canyon of buildings. They call it the, the Henge. You might have heard of Manhattan Henge, well, there's also Toronto Henge. Or insert any city name with skyscrapers. Henge. <laughs> In New York, it's kind of like a big deal. Crowds of people swarm the area to take photographs, like it's a festival or something. Because they have a lot more canyons in Manhattan. So I guess it's just more of a neat thing there than it would be here. Although here we have our fair share. And there 
here's Mount Pleasant Road. Try to get behind some of these leaves over here. And looks like the sun is hidden behind some buildings again. But we're getting closer to Young and Bloor. And there's a look south down Ted Rogers Way, which is Jarvis Street, a little further down. And this sculpture, or public art, is called Community. Which was also the name of an awesome sitcom on NBC. Probably the last great network primetime sitcom. Yeah. Real live stream? Uh, no, just a recorded video. Oh, I watch your videos all the time. Oh, you do? Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm I glad. really enjoy your videos oh. with my wife. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Shafkat. Shafkat? Yeah. All right, well, good to meet you. Yeah, yeah do you want to be you. in the video? Yeah, I don't Yeah, mind. all right. Hey, Hi, everybody. Everyone. Ran into a subscriber. <laughs> so I'm glad you liked my videos. Cool. Really yeah, keep an eye out for this one. All right. Keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. You too, Thanks. bye. That was cool. Now we're coming into the the heart of Bloor Yorkville up ahead, which is Young and Bloor. Here's Church Street. I don't know if the light was green and I didn't notice, but in any case, if I did, whoops. I was too busy panning around.
And no shortage of nice shady spots here along this section with all these tall buildings. I don't know what I'd do if I lived in some low-rise suburban neighborhood and had to take walks around there all the time. I'd probably never leave the house in the summer. It is technically still summer, by the way. At least for a few more days. Live music. Oh, maybe it's not live music. <laughs> I thought it was her singing, but I think it's just a recorded uh, track there. So hopefully that doesn't get picked up. And here we are, Young and Bloor. This is a scramble intersection here. I think the only other one is down at Young and Dundas. We'll just take a stroll through the Mink Mile. Since we're here, wondering why they call it the Mink Miles because this is where all the high-end luxury retailers are located or at least clustered mostly along these few blocks of Bloor Street West and in the Yorkville neighborhood just to the north sort of like Toronto's analog to Fifth Avenue in Manhattan Italy. Yeah, I, I caught that. Thank you. 
Where's Bay Street? traffic situation here. Probably shouldn't have tried to go in there with people crossing the intersection like that. Four Seasons Hotel and Bay Subway Station is just right up ahead. And it's certainly quite busy here on Bloor Street. These are almost like normal Saturday crowds, I would say. If it was busier pre-pandemic, it wasn't by all that much from what I remember. Although this side of the street seems to have a lot more pedestrians than the south side does. I don't know if that's because this is the shady side of the street. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Looking up into the Yorkville neighborhood. I've done some walks through this area where I've sort of named off all of the high-end retailers. You know, all the usual suspects, you know, Versace, Tiffany, Gucci, you know, all that kind of stuff. Places that I would probably never set foot in in my life. There's a neat little pedestrian path leading into Yorkville. And in one of my older videos, I actually named them all off and intentionally mispronounced them because they often have names that are not easily pronounced if you don't know the proper way to do it. And I thought it would be fun just to butcher the names on purpose. I had to make sure I mentioned that in the video, otherwise people would have inundated the comments saying like, you're saying it wrong, that's not how you say it, you're saying it wrong. It's like, I know, that's the point. There's one right there. We all know how it's pronounced. It's definitely not gucky.
And here we are coming up the Avenue Road and this is the end of the Mink Mile and this is where I'll wrap up the video as well. As we look at the Royal Ontario Museum. So I hope you enjoyed the walk starting from Riverdale Park East and north up Broadview to Danforth and then west over the Bloor Viaduct into downtown. Continuing west along Bloor Street into and through the Mink Mile ending here at Avenue Road. We have a CN Tower sighting. So leave a comment below and like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my new merch store. And you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching and be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue.